Hey, uh, welcome to episode six of Moto BS, Brian and Sean. And today we've got a special guest, our friend Jose Peralta. Our first guest. Our first guest. <laughs> this is awesome. Uno. Yeah, he's uh, he's a member of our Classic Riders group. Um, I think we met Jose, I don't know, four or five years ago now? Yeah. Okay. Friend first, yeah. part of the Riders group second. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Jose, in the past we've talked about some of the trips I've taken, and Jose is the one I've gone on most of them with. Um, actually, our first, my first overnight trip was to cedar key and that's yeah. where i met you in victoria that's right the uh, infamous uh, frunk riding into the ditch <laughs> that's right jose going in I got courageously it. I... to help him and getting yeah. a mud bath as a reward yeah he throttled in the mud when i was trying to help him <laughs> yeah we were trying to push him out and he had the unfortunate position of standing behind the bike <laughs> yeah oh no <laughs> he got out though he got out yeah yeah he rode a uh, moto guzzi americana or america whatever it's called a big giant cruiser 800 pound bike right down into the ditch yeah, yeah. oh took, took a turn too wide and but well it was great because of the pipes yeah was... yeah he kept it up though he kept mm -hmm. it up but anyway uh we're gonna we're gonna talk about jose's uh love of motorcycles and how he got yeah. started with that yeah it's really nice of you to join us today jose Thank um you. To speaking of the riders group we just got done riding from breakfast so I had a nice oh, all full and legs <laughs> Yeah, they, they brought Jose a plate of oatmeal that was it was literally like the size of you know of the the entire it could have been a meal for two or three people yeah well we're also upping our our game here a little bit Jose because we are in the presence of a doctor now oh, that's right so okay. yeah, mom mom hey look I've yeah. got friends that are doctors yeah Jose's a doctor <laughs> yeah it's embarrassing but yes yeah yeah we don't mean to embarrass you <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm going to embarrass yeah, you some more, though, because you're also a commander in the Army. I am. Commander in the Army Reserves, right? That's right. I am. I'm, so thank I'm you for your party. service. Oh, thank you for your support. We um we really appreciate it. We have somebody at the window there. Yeah, that was kind of weird. It's, uh, I think it's paparazzi. They're coming, coming all over yeah, now. paparazzi. It's, I heard uh, you were here. <laughs> I heard Jose was here. If you have yeah. a guest, let's go check it out. Yeah. So we're going to get into all that, Jose. Sure. And we want to hear your journey, your story, Um, maybe talk a little bit about the motorcycles you've had and some of the, yeah. the history you've had with that and how we got to meet you and brings sure. you into the Moto BS studios today. So, okay, well, uh, my love of bikes started when I was 14. Okay. So, um, I had, uh, I grew up in New York in the city, but I ended up having to move to, to Santo Domingo and, you know, in third world countries, which is not as much as a third world country anymore, but at that time, everybody has a bike. Hmm. So I wanted a bike, and my mom said no, because it's it's affordable transportation. It's affordable transportation, you know, easy to maintain. Gas. Yeah. So my mom said no. So I went to my godmother, because you know, in, in Hispanic families, you know, the the higher the hierarchy, you know, they say yes, it trumps the bottom. You got to keep running it up the yeah, flagpole. Eventually, you get somebody. I'll, you'll get somebody. So she said yes. I had I had money, not all of it, and she and, I, and we bought it. But I was fourteen years old, so I couldn't ride it. Oh. On the street. So my mom said, uh, you can have it, but you can't ride it on the street. You have to ride it, you know, around here in the grass and sidewalks and all that. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, fine. So that's when it all started. I stripped it. What was it? It was, a, it was an XL80, a Honda XL80. Oh, okay. And I stripped it and turned it into an XR80. Oh. So I took the lights off. I took the plates off, everything, and, and um, turned it into a bike. And I was riding off-road with it. And that was my first bike. That was, that was a great bike. Um, I moved up then to a Suzuki 125, or a street 125. Okay. And th that needed more power. So I ended up getting uh, an RM100. They always need more power, cars. don't they? Power. Yeah. Isn't it? That's We're still chasing that today, aren't we? <laughs> it <laughs> needs right. more power. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got a story about that too. Well, we, about, a, about a new bike. Right. Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> creeping up the chain. Don't, yeah. don't skip ahead, Tom. Don't exactly. skip ahead. <laughs> so then I, I had a, uh, an RM100. And I was racing and, you know, I didn't have a sponsor, so I had to buy everything. Um, but what I would do is... So I you were... Let me, let me just jump in there. You were racing competitively in a, racing in a series. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, how, now, how old were you at this time? Still a teenager? Uh, 15, okay. 15 okay. Years old. And I was pretty good, but didn't have a sponsor, so I had to buy everything. And I'm looking at the other ones. And I said, I can beat them, but why are their bikes so much faster? Hmm. So that's when I got into mechanical things and I and I... We, we, I said, what, why are they doing so much better? Mm. And it's like, well, they're 100s, but they're bored to 125. Oh. And they put different shocks and all that. So I was like, okay. So I used to, I grew up in, in the city, but I was living in Santo Domingo because of my dad's job. Okay. 
So um, I would I would work all the summers at Shea Stadium, Yankee Stadium. I had a, a paper route job, all this to make money, and then I buy all this stuff and gear here yeah. in the U.S. and take it with me. Mm. So and then I started working on motorcycles, and I really liked it, and I thought that's what I was going to do. I was going to work on uh, on cars, motorcycles. I wanted to be a mechanic. It just you just Everything. had a love for it at that yeah. young age. Yeah, that's awesome. That was before your love of dentistry. That was, yeah. Well, <laughs> the funny story about dentistry was that I, I was really good with my hands, and my uh, my brother was like. There's no money in mechanics. You should go into dentistry. Well, because oh, really, I mean, you're just using a pair of pliers, right? Yeah, I it's mean... a different kind of pliers. <laughs> yeah. But it's a pair of pliers. Drills, pliers. Yeah. So the good thing was my dad did, um, when I, when I, because I had to live there uh, from 14 to 21. So when I was uh, 18 and graduated high school, I was like, I'm out. And my dad said, you're not leaving to the U.S. alone, knowing me, how I was. Okay. Uh, you know, get any kind of education, and then you go to the U.S. and you're on your own. Are you saying that you were kind of a headstrong, yeah. kind of, you had a little bit of a wild I'm, I'm side, Jose? Very, very much a wild yeah. side. Uh, and, and very much an adrenaline junkie, okay. still. So, I mean, I love, I've jumped out of planes, and, you know, the, with the Army, I've gone, you know, forward deployed. Right. Um, and you, you've been deployed all over the world. I've been, I've been deployed multiple times. Yeah. yeah. And and now with he this position, gets, he gets the cushy deployments. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've been to combat zones, and it, it's it's been fun. It's uh, it's a whole different experience. It makes you want to yeah, enjoy when, more here when you when yeah, you're here. Well, uh -huh. I, I remember. I still remember you messaging me when you were over there, and you're like, "This place is so nice. I'm thinking of getting a summer home." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always summer because it was 120 <laughs> degrees in the, in the desert. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it. You're mostly like you enjoyed those group showers, right? Is that what yeah. <laughs> it's funny because you know you're in a, in, a, in a confined environment where everyone knows everyone and everybody has a job, and you know your patient might be showering, you know, yeah. in the next hall, and then you're like, hey, you have an appointment at ten, you know. You, you even sent us a, you sent us a photo once of you uh, cleaning the teeth of a uh, like a Malamu, right? Uh, a Belgian Malinois. It was yeah. um, um, a special forces dog. And that photo that I sent was actually on the uh, Army Reserve Instagram page. Yeah. And that's, they took it. I didn't, I know there was a photographer there, but um, I didn't notice until they said, hey, listen, you're, you're, yes, you're famous. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, uh, yeah, that, that photo came out with, uh, we were working on a special forces dog. Um, and, and, and that's how my motorcycle started at 14. 14, yeah. And you're racing. Racing. So, and where then, did the racing go? So, I, when I got to 21 and I moved to the U.S., um, I had no money. So it was like, well, I have no money for to spend on motorcycles and all that. Um, and I was always riding more on the track than on the than on street. And riding in the U.S. and street, I found it to be intimidating. Mm. Now it's like I have more, way much more fun getting on the highway. Yeah. But before I was like, I don't even want to get on the highway, you know, side roads and all that. Yeah. So. Um, I did one of those things of, uh, it's happened like three times in my life where I, I said, Hey, listen, uh, I had told my wife, listen, I, I'm on, I'm going to get a bike. And she said, absolutely not. I had that same answer. So I went and I bought it. <laughs> I had that same <laughs> so, that, that, so was, that was also mine. <laughs> so I went and I bought it two weeks later. Yeah. It's happened three times. And no, you're not going to do that. Well, yeah. I went ahead and I did it. So, honey, and, and I guess I did something. I want you to sit down, <laughs> honey. I'm, take a deep breath. I'm buying. I'm buying a. Uh, what was that Ford you had? The uh, oh, the, the Ford Co Mustang. Cobra, the Cobra. No, you had the Mustang, and then I had the must. I had a '66 Mustang, which was a. No, you're not buying a car now. You're gonna have to wait. I said okay, and two weeks later, I showed up at the house with with the Ford, the '66 Mustang. Yeah. Then I switched that for a 65 Shelby Cobra. Yeah, the, yeah, mm. the Cobra kit car. The Cobra kit, yeah. With, with, wow. no, power, no power steering, no brakes. No power steering, all, drum all, brakes. All motor. 302 V8. That's like a 2,200-pound car with, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. it was with, a, with like 300 horsepower. You know, it's just insane crazy. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Oh, a lot of fun. Until one day I'm going really fast and I break then the car. Not that it wouldn't stop, but it had drum brakes. You know, when you're used oh, to disc little, brakes yeah. and all these electronics. It's a big difference. Huge difference. So um, the way I got into street bikes again is I went and I want, I was, I'm sitting at a stoplight and I saw this guy with a white beard. Kind of looked like you, Ryan. He, he had a white beard. <laughs> handsome And I looked handsome, handsome devil, his, this yeah, guy. Handsome. And he goes ahead and I look at him and he had like this baby blue and white 
Bonneville, like a 2017 Bonneville, or maybe 2018 around there. And I looked at it and I go, I got to get back into bikes. Mm. I really love the riding. That's what happened to me, too. I was pulling on the interstate one day and I looked yeah. over and there was a guy coming on with one of those new Indians. like the Yeah. Scout. Scout. Yeah, the Scout. And I was like, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. I want that. I didn't end up getting one, but yeah. it got me looking, and I ended up yeah. same place you did, Tampa. Charlotte. That's right. So, <laughs> so the story uh, of of um, partially how we got together was I went to Tampa Triumph, and I saw, and I I went to buy one, and it was sold. Uh, it's like, hey, we just sold it, but we have another one. It was a Speedmaster, and it was like a 2017. They had like six thousand. I'm sorry, a, 20, a 2007 but had like two, like 5,000 miles on it. It was like nothing. Mm. So I took it and I rode it and I, you know, I'm used to motocross. So I'm used to the, you know, the power. Yeah. The and, yeah. you know, the, the torque, you know, that bike just take off quick. And and I th- it was a 900. I was like, it's plenty of CC. And I rode it for six months and I was... Yeah. Yeah. This isn't this isn't enough power for me. Those More nine, power. Those nine hundreds are deceptive though, because it's big engine, but they've yeah. tuned them down. So yeah, you talked about that in one of the shows. That, yeah. Yeah. Like, they, you think you're gonna get a whole bunch of power? Yeah. I would pull up next to somebody to light, and they're like, "What is that? Like a six hundred? I'm like, "No, it's a 900. And they're like, <laughs> "Oh, really?" And then I and I'd be like, "Yeah, but yeah." So I bought it and I had it for six months, and and at the time it was KJ that was the manager. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember and, KJ. And funny thing, man, KJ. What a super nice guy. Yeah, yeah he was great. Super nice yeah, he's guy. a great guy. Yeah. Um, and I go ahead and I come back six months later and I walk in and he goes, hey, Jose. I go like, damn, man. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Like he remembered me immediately. Oh, yeah. And I said, listen, this is just not enough. I got to say. And, and I was looking at like a speed triple. That's yeah. what I was looking for. And then I saw the Ace Cafe. Yeah. And I was like, what a beautiful bike. Yeah. So Jose, it was for, for a time, him and I had the exact same bike. Yeah. Like, because those those bikes are actually numbered. Yeah. And ours were like a few numbers apart. Uh, yeah, mine is nine nine six. Yeah. Out of fourteen hundred, and and when I bought it, he said, you know, those are you know very limited edition. I was like, mm. oh, so there's nothing here in Tampa. Nobody, everybody knows where I'm. He yeah. said, no, there's another one. Yeah, and then we go on the like, ride, and we're yeah, <laughs> everywhere oh. we go, it's like oh, two, two of the exact same <laughs> limited edition black. Yeah. Two of the fourteen hundred right two here. Fourteen hundred. It was here destiny. In Tampa. And then. Yeah. Thankfully, Jose, like, he changed the seat on his. And yeah, he, yeah. He put, that he was put, a design. He put some, he put some Corbin, leather. And, I put a Corbin seat on it. Because you guys kept getting on each other's bikes. Was, yeah. Wait a second. Yeah, was, <laughs> Wait, this, this is this my key bike. doesn't work. Well, well I, I added a rack to the back of mine when I was doing the, tri- the trips. And then Jose's like, I want a rack. So we bought the exact same rack and yeah. came to my house. And I helped him put it on because it... Well, the problem with that model is it has really nice LED blinkers on the back. But yeah. they stick out in a different way than the rest of the Bonnevilles. Yeah. And so... The rack won't fit it, so we had to modify. You have to modify. You have to take, you have to take yeah. the lights off and put the rack, then put extensions on the lights, which I had already done. So, and and that's the part of like when we were doing that, it felt like the the uh, the the RM one hundred I had that I was working on that all the time. Yeah, making modifications, boring the uh, the cylinder, making it bigger, stronger. Um, that that it felt like that. Right, you know, working on the bike. So now you have multiple bikes in your I garage. Did. I, I just, I just, uh, so I bought a, a Kawasaki Concourse 14. Well, wait. Tremendous you, power. Uh, you're skipping ahead because, okay. so when you, when you were deployed overseas, yeah. y- you were texting me <laughs> quite frequently about how you wanted to get a, a touring bike. And I'm online, I'm looking up all these bikes, trying to find a good choice for you. Yeah. Because you, you're like, oh, Victoria and I, we're going to go travel around the country together. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this one or this one or this one. And you came back, and like three days later, what did you buy? I bought a Suzuki DRZ 400. Yeah, not exactly <laughs> what we were talking about. <laughs> no, because this, I, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go back to my motocross roots. There's not a motocross. Brooksville has a track, but it's not really motocross. And and I took it one day. Yeah. So we, One day. So, so we, we're going to have to add some B-roll here because somewhere yeah. we've got the video. Because our friend John Ross, who... Yeah, so but let me tell you the story of how it happened because I, I remember okay. how exactly how it happened. So we're riding; it was just a lot of sand. So we got Kroom. Like, in Kroom, yeah. Yeah, Kroom is like a, a is Central Florida, like motorcycle off road vehicle yeah. park where you buy like a membership. You buy a membership, and I paid for the for the whole, for whole year for a whole year for a whole year. Which I would go to ride even better. <laughs> and it's so it's huge. There, one time, too. the first time on the bike, mm-hmm. and I, what did John say? He's like. Don't buy a membership. Just come for one time. Yeah, he's. I was like, no, 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 no. was like, let's I've go, been riding since fourteen. Let's go do a fire road or something. You're like, no, no, I'm going to Croom. <laughs> yeah, 
So hard-headed, I went ahead and uh, got into this big sand pit and just went over the bars club. Oh no! Yeah, just about <laughs> broke your neck, right? And and I fell, and and I and 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 John comes running to me. He's like, "Are you all right? Are you all right?" And I and I'm getting up and I go, "Oh man, that hurts." I'm okay. He goes, "Good news." I got it on film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. At least he asked if you're okay first. Uh, yeah, he first asked me if I was okay. I said, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. Said, well, good news. I got it on film. I was like, oh. So, yeah, I, I see that all the time. Bad news is your collarbone is sticking <laughs> yeah, out of your shoulder. It, yeah. <laughs> it didn't break, but I was sore. And I got home, and I'm like walking like this. And, of course, like, well, wife, it's, okay. it's like 800 milligrams of Motrin three times a day for 10 days. I should be fine, <laughs> but I was hurting. So I had to get rid of the bike. Yeah. And when you, traded of, it, when you traded in, they were like, nobody's ever traded in a bike that was three weeks old before. <laughs> yeah. The bike was three weeks old, used once. I put like uh, 50 miles on it, and I'm trading it back. <laughs> They're like, what happened? So then so, you got the Kawasaki Concourse. Then Con I got course. the Kawasaki Concourse, the 1400. Tremendous power. What a What, what an awesome bike. And is I that, rode. Is that inline four? It's a, I think it's an inline four. Okay, yeah. Fourteen hundred. Like um, Hundred sixty horsepower, something like that. Yeah, it it it's can pretty it heavy can go. Though. It's it a can, very heavy, like seven hundred. And I and I rode it and and I used it, but I didn't use it enough to go ahead and justify having the bike sitting there. And I still wanted to ride a little more. Well, you're too busy to be taking like two month trips. And exactly. Stuff. <laughs> So I went ahead and a, I... He has a full-time job where he runs, what, like 10 <laughs> clinics and then... Third, uh, actually, it's 50. I, I, I manage now 50 offices and... That's all, only 50? 80 doctors. So lazy. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah you that's should have nothing. a second job. In two states. You should get a second job. <laughs> well, and then I have the army job. Oh, that's, that's right. That, that, uh, that's another full-time job as, as commander. So I have two full-time jobs and I don't use the bike. And I said, I just want to get rid of it and get something fun. Yeah. So what do I do? I call Brian and I go, I'm getting that speed triple RS. He goes, well, look at the specs and compare it to this other bike. Uh, see what you think. And I, but this is the second time I'm thinking of getting a speed triple. Yeah. And and so, then I'm sorry, Don. I didn't mean to talk him out of a speed triple. <laughs> it's a good but, bike, too. But it, yeah. No, it's a phenomenal bike. It, but you they got to do something about those headlights. Though. That's what turns me off on that bike is those crazy bug headlights on it. Bug eyes. Yeah. yeah. So I went ahead and he said, why don't you take a look at this, the, the MT-09 or the, uh, XSR. E e the XSR 900. It's the same bike, but different. So I started looking at them. I tracked two down. They were both in one, in one, uh, in one dealership. I rode them both and I bought the MT-09. Yeah, that. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah that. Can't wait to see it. Yeah. Yamaha Triple is a special engine, man. It's, yeah. it's a lot of fun and it's not too much, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wanted it to be, I was reading about it. It says like, it's uh, um, like, what, what, what is the name for the, for the MT-09? It's like, uh, it's more fiery, more of a beast, more um, like unkept. It's like, yeah. it's wild. I was like, that's me. Yeah. I want that. That bike. talks to my inner being. <laughs> and, uh, and I bought it. I still haven't picked it up. I have to go next week to go pick it up. So, yeah. yeah. What color? It's, um gray black and blue gray black does it have the colored wheels yes They're the color wheel right? it's the sp so it's the mt09 sp it has a bunch of electronics which is the truly the only reason why i looked at it more than the uh than the speed triple rs the mm -hmm. electronics on it are just amazing yeah very I can attest with all the it. different modes and everything yeah. is that yeah. what you're, okay it's, it's yeah. definitely like the the imu sensor the traction control it's definitely saved me a couple times well you remember when we, I, were, we were in, in in yeah we were do, we were up we were up in, in tennessee yeah was up it? In, up, north carolina we were heading to the uh the rattler i think is one we were on the way to and we got off on and i don't even know what it was that you hit but it your like back was, tire yeah, went was, this it, way and then the bike just kind of adjusted and you were like because we were on the headset we were like holy i was like did you see that <laughs> and i'm like i'm like oh my god like, yeah and that, actually that actually was a funny story because we were going to the Rattler, and these these stupid yeah. apps on the phone they always they're always trying to like get you the best route. Yeah. When the route you program in there is the ro the route you want to take because you're like, oh, I want to go on this cool road and that yeah. cool road. And somehow or another, it got us onto like one of the Tennessee A dirt highways. Track. Well, we got, we were on the highway, and I was like, wait, it's taking us straight to the hotel. We're gonna we're gonna miss the Rattler. Yeah. So we pulled off, and we figured out, okay, we either got to go back like 50 miles. 
yeah. to go the way we want to go. Or there's this other shortcut road up here we could take, yeah. which turned out what to a be shortcut. It turned out to be a mountainous <laughs> dirt road. Yeah. And you're on the Bonneville and I'm um, on the Tracer. Yeah. <laughs> that was, and, and it just, like every time you kept going, it kept adjusting and it was like, well, it's only 30 minutes. Okay. And then we're riding for like 20. It's like, well, now it's 45 minutes more. Yeah. And then we kept riding and then, and now we're in the middle. I mean, you can, hear the, you can hear the banjos pretty much. Yeah. It's then, like we're in the middle of nowhere. So, it's getting some, dark. Some guy was and coming like, the other way and he saw us and he got such a happy look on his face and he put his hands out the window. He's like, stop, stop. So we stopped and he goes. Is the highway really back there? Yeah. Because he'd been on that same road coming from the other yes. way. Because yeah. he's like, the GPS he put me on lost. this road. He was yeah. like, he was like, I think I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, actually, you're pretty you're close very to the close end. You're very close to the close yeah. to the end. And then he goes, I just saw a bear back there. Yeah, and we were all excited. We're like, there's a bear? <laughs> yeah. So we're like, but yeah. it was gone. The bear was gone. The bear was gone. We didn't get to see it. And that took us in nowhere. We were like, oh, uh, well, at some point we were like, lost. there was like this real steep uh, yeah. Where it wanted us to turn, we're like, that can't be. That the way. can't be it. That's just another going to add another hour to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If we go down there, we're never coming back. So <laughs> we we kept going, and then it kept getting longer and longer because it was yeah. like, uh, Let, let's turn back. So we ended up turning back and yeah, and eventually getting off of that road. It was actually kind of fun. Those are the things yeah. that make those trips fun. When yeah, you, that's right. You, you do something unexpected. So that so I was thinking if we take that and that's the wrong one, How are we, gonna get we back can't up come back up this road. Yeah, it was on, really on, the Bonneville really won't steep. make it. Yeah, yeah, it was steep and the the Bonneville and, and the street the tires. Tires, yeah. yeah, street tires. And the road was kind of a just like a damp, ruddy, muddy. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the shortcut. Yeah. That was the one that took us to, to, to the, the highway. Route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, let's take a step back real quick mm -hmm. because the two of you have done, what, three or four? Three. Long yeah, well, trips, we, right? Well, if you, count, North, if you count Cedar Key. Cedar Key one. And then we did two times the mountains, right? Yeah, two times. And, and then Key and, West. And then Key West. Yeah. So when you say the mountains, you're, you're talking about the Appalachian Mountains? Yeah, so or? typically uh, we'll... We'll go to Atlanta. He's got a cousin. Great Smoky that, Mountains. Yeah, yeah, we'll go to the Smoky Mountains, uh, the Cherahouse Skyway, the Tail of the Dragon, all that stuff up yeah. there. We did it going one, up one way, and then we did it the, the next trip. We did it coming, coming back. Yeah, we okay. Like one time we stayed in Gatlinburg. Yeah. Um, the other time we we uh, usually we'll go we'll go well we we we've, we've taken the trailer um, both times. Yeah. So we trail the bikes to Atlanta because from here to Atlanta it's, it's really flat. There's it's, nothing to it's see. It's boring. Yeah. It's boring. So we trailed the bikes to Atlanta. Then from Atlanta, we went all the way yeah, he's up got to... A, he's got a cousin that lives there. Very convenient for us. She's got a huge yard with a gate. Yeah. So we can just we can drop the uh, the trailer the there. The trailer, the we, car. And she's yeah. actually got an Airbnb on her property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is oh, really man. convenient for us. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, so we, we, stayed there. We, we stayed there. The first time we stayed there, the night we went up. And then that time, I was kind of like... Well, we really wasted a lot of time. Mm -hmm. We should have kept going. Yeah. So the next trip, we we just dropped the trailer and kept going, and then we and we went all and we the way stayed there on the way back. Yeah. Instead, yeah, because my my son also lives in Atlanta, so which I think that first trip we went out to that, dinner with him. That ice stuff. cream place that he took. Yeah, yeah. Je, it was Jenny's, I think. J E N I. Wow. Yeah, Jenny's ice what cream. It's like right place. in downtown Decatur, and it's is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember. I still remember that ice cream it was so good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Now, have you have you taken any adventures um, with more than two people have you been on a bigger group ride no well not not, not well like, no the one from cedar, cedar the, key. the one to cedar key which cedar key yeah. isn't like, too far right? yeah if if you rode direct like from here to there it's, it's two hours it's two or three hours yeah. or whatever yeah. but we did like a whole route um, yeah. John was leading it was us. six hours we yeah. did it in six but it was yeah, we went we went all the way to central the florida and we yeah. did all kinds of you know had lunch at this at this place uh it was really nice. They had a band that was going to play yeah. that, that at lunchtime. Mm, it was actually okay. pretty nice. And then, actually, then we stayed the night in Cedar Key. Um, Cedar Key is not very big. I, I was expecting yeah. more, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we got there, it was like, you know, they have like a little strip of restaurants like that kind of go out into the, into the Gulf a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we had a good time that night, though. We had uh, yeah. That was when Frank was with us. Frank. 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 Yeah, right. That's our... <laughs> that's our uh, oh, you mean Frank. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the, and you know that was where the hurricane hit the la last year. Yeah, yeah, it hit after after we left there. Yeah, it after like a, few, like a few months later, right? It, well, yeah. So it was um, no a year later. Yeah, a year it, later. It, but it washed it out pretty good. Oh yeah. But I think that happens to them all the time because mm -hmm. they're right there on the coast. But yeah, yeah. so we had a good time that night. Um, there was a, there was a girl with us too. I don't remember her name. Remember the young girl? Um, I don't remember her she name. She was like in her thirties, she maybe. She was one of the. It was. I think that was her first trip riding. Yeah, she she wrote, she actually had ridden over from the East Coast. 
Oh, oh, her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the blonde yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I wish I could remember her name, but um, yeah, yeah. She, she was a friend of John's or something, mm -hmm. and then and she rode from like Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, somewhere to us to then go to Cedar Key. Yeah, to go to Cedar Key, and then so it, the it was me, you, and Victoria, and her, and uh, and and Frank, and we went John, out. John, no, there was more. Yeah, well, John, well. Yeah, because Anne and her husband were on the ride. Yes. But, but they, they didn't come out with us. I'm talking that night. Out. Oh, that night, yeah. Yeah, so we went to this little divey place right there on the on the water, and uh, they had a live band. There was people dancing on the table. Remember that one guy who yeah. got from the table? And, and, <laughs> and we're like, oh, that's not I'm, wa good. I'm watching him going, this is going to end poorly, because it was <laughs> you just it, see it, coming. It, it was a pedestal table. It had yeah. one leg in the middle. And, and of yeah. course, he's, he's up there dancing around, showing and off. And there he goes. He's just literally, and it was a concrete floor. He just splashed yep. right on the concrete. And there he goes. He, yeah. he went yeah. down. It was, it and was, then, oh, then we saw him the next day. We were walking to get coffee. And the town's so small, like everybody's out looking for mm -hmm. somewhere to eat. And he's walking down the street and his whole side of his face is black and his eyes all oh, bulged no. out. And, and then he was like, I was like, oh, you're the guy that fell on the table last night. <laughs> and he was like, you saw that? <laughs> he was like, it was my birthday. <laughs> and yeah, he, he was out and his friends were all buying him shots. And yeah, it did, did not end well for him. But he, mm -hmm. he seemed very happy about it. So I guess that's, it was a good time. That's what friends are for. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was a good time. Yeah. So that was the first one, Cedar Key. Cedar, Cedar Key, yeah. Second one. And all together then, was like eight or ten of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then the mountains twice. It was just us. And then we made a big group ride to go to Key West. And the day, like three days before, there's a huge thunder, uh, a huge storm coming yeah, through. Yeah, like forecast. And, and, and we, we kept going, oh, no, it's going to clear. Yeah. It's, oh, no, it's Florida. No. It's Florida. And then, yeah, no, no, you were saying, oh, you know, you know how many times you're in Florida, we, we stop a ride and it's because it's gonna, and nothing happens and nothing happens. Well, like the day before, we're like, I, this is not looking good. I call my <laughs> friend that lives down in Fort Lauderdale and he's like, man, you, you're, you're still coming down here? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be fine. He goes, bro, it's like 45 mile hour winds and it's blowing sideways. Yeah. And so thankfully you were able to get a hold of the uh, I, hotel. I, I got they, the hotel. And they and gave, and I couldn't believe they gave you a refund. Well, the, the, what they said was that everybody had canceled. Like yeah. there was nobody. So it was kind of like, you know what? Yeah, we'll give you a refund because we're going to be practically shut down. Right. Mm. So we don't want you to come. So we did cancel that ride. And then we went a um, couple months later. A couple of months later. Yeah. We went back, and 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 that was a, that was an awesome trip. That that ride across that seven mile bridge, mm. and then you know having a drink in 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 in, uh, well, we in Key out, West. We went out the night before in Fort Lauderdale. We went out. Yeah, that's right. We stopped in Fort Lauderdale for the night because his son lives down there. Because my son lives there. And, and then the next morning, your buddy uh, and all oh, of his friends met us on their Harleys. Yeah. So so these guys, this is a Harley group, and their their ride is you know they do long rides. Mm. Butch, shout out to you. Yeah. He he does rides from Chicago to Albuquerque. They did Route 66, the whole thing. Nice. Then they went from, um, uh, I think it was from Albuquerque. They went up to Seattle or Vancouver and, and do the ride. And then, um, so he said, oh, you guys are going fine. Meet me at this gas station on the turnpike. Yeah. And I'll show you a different route to get there. So you, the traffic is starting to build. So we're all and smoking then, cigars at like <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Seven thirty. Uh, yeah, Seven yeah, thirty. No, it was so early. And we I, get there. They're smoking I, I, cigars and drinking yeah, the Cuban coffee. coffee and I'm like at smoking 7 a cigar <laughs> at seven o'clock in the morning. I think like, I think I'll wait till till tonight. You know, when we get yeah. to Key West or whatever. And he took us on this set, this different route that I didn't, we didn't even know existed, and we cut traffic. Yeah, yeah. Because to to the top of the keys is kind of wide. It obviously it narrows down as yeah. you get further in. But um, anyway, I think we'll call this a break. Okay, and then we'll pick right. up the story from there. It's, it's getting ready to go. 30 click. minutes goes by quick, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was an excellent job, Jose. Yeah, you know, like, uh, when you talk to Sam, he's like, can you hit, hit that? And then hit it again. Okay. There we go. We're rolling. Yeah, so uh, uh, Butch and his friends, they rode with us down to breakfast. They, they rode They rode us to uh, to a diner place, and we had... Yeah, uh, what was the name of that place? I, oh, I got a picture. Hall Halley's... Um, it's some Hatties. Yeah, and then well, then they for after breakfast they rode with us all the they way to our hotel. They rode with us to Marathon. Yeah, right, because we stayed just above the Seven Mile Bridge. Yeah, um, we dropped our bags off, and it was funny because we pulled up and there was like I don't know nine of us. Yeah, and the lady looks out at all the bikes and she's like, "How many y'all staying in this room?" <laughs> We're like, "Just two of us, just yeah. two." Yeah, they're leaving. They're leaving. Yeah, 
So so then we we ended up uh, going for marathon. Then we went we kept riding and we went all the way to Key West. Yeah. We had lunch there. We had got a cigar, cigar, coffee, um, and then uh, then we rode back. And then and Butch told us, "Hey, stop at this place, uh, Boondocks. Boondocks, the Boonies." Yeah, something like that. It's a big place. It's big place. Yeah, I mean like multi level. They've got an outdoor uh, like fire, fire pits yeah. and and they had a live band playing there. So we stopped there. How to we, a couple of yeah, beers and you, you probably drinks. had you probably had another cigar. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I'm a one cigar like a week month person. <laughs> and then uh, uh, we stayed for the band. The band was really good. Yeah, we stayed for. The and band. then we rode back, and it must have been like ten o'clock at night by the time we got back. And we had been riding since six a.m. Yeah, that we left Fort Lauderdale to. Yeah, when, when Jose and I go ride, we have some other friends. Yeah. Who are, occasionally say they're going to go with us on a trip and i'm always thinking to myself please don't go because they're like i think like a couple hundred miles a day is good right yeah and we're like we got to get like 500 miles a day and at least right we're, yeah we, we'll get up early because him and i had the same we both wake up at like 6 a.m on the dot yeah. alarm or not and you know we're out the door and ready to go and these other people except like, for this one time yeah, well <laughs> yeah so well what happened on the key west trip was we started looking at the radar and like our trip home on sunday was going to be there was, there was a, a massive storm. storm coming in. You could see it coming yeah. across the Gulf, and we're mm. like, "Well, we had our rain gear. We're like, all right, we'll get up at we'll get up early, like six or seven, and we'll be out the yeah. door." And you know, then so we'll we're probably thinking of going ahead and doing it. We might get part of it, but we'll stop for breakfast. It'll go, and then we'll keep going. But it was since we're riding all the way up and then taking seventy five north all the way to Tampa, the the storm was coming like this. So it wasn't like this that'll just go through. It was like this. So you're going to get hit, you know, everywhere that you're riding. Yeah. You're going to be hit for, for hours. So here's another thing about mm. traveling with Jose. When his head hits the pillow, he instantly falls asleep. I've never seen anything like it in my life. <laughs> like he literally, he'll just like, okay, yeah, I'm going to watch this TV show. And, he, and, it, and then the remote just goes clump in his lap and he just goes out. And I'm like, wow. And I don't fall asleep like that. So I usually, I'll just have my phone, my earbuds in and I'll just be watching youtube or something and i was out yeah he, he was out and um and so then like all of a sudden like the lights are on and he's like hey hey i got i got this idea you well, want to hear it so so yeah <laughs> so so at, at um i wait i woke up and the the soldier in me is always in planning mode okay to make sure that things go right and all the unforeseen things try contingency, to contingency right contingency plans a b and c so i get up at like three in the morning three ten. i go to the bathroom and i just look at my phone and i go I look at the at the storm and then I look at the forecast and I keep moving it and saying, okay, where if we get to Naples by this time, the storm is going to be at the bottom of it and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to miss it and we'll just have to stay there for like an hour. So I, I go, Brian, it's like 3.20 in the morning. Yeah, I had gone to bed at like midnight. <laughs> and he goes, what? I said, I got, a, I got a plan. I got a plan. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> my God, that was the fastest six hours of sleep I ever got. I'm looking at my watch. And I'm like, oh, my God, said, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, I got a plan. If if we leave now, we're not going to get hammered with the storm. Yeah, he's like. And he goes, he goes what? what? He goes, what do, you, what do you think? If you want, you can go back to sleep. And I'm looking at him. He's standing there holding his gun. He's <laughs> no. staring at me. And he's like, I'll just turn the lights back off and you can go back to sleep. And I was like, um, okay, I think I'll just get up. Is that Okay. <laughs> So so we left at three thirty in the yeah. morning. We went next door. There was a like a shell station next door, and yeah. they had no coffee in there. So I, I got like a bottle of Starbucks cold coffee and a thing of those little round donuts or something. Yeah, yeah, those little powdered jelly, yeah. powdered donuts. You yeah. should have you should have sh shooken Brian up and said, Brian, we have to leave right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. So his plan did give. I'll give him fair credit. It worked out well. We, we got to uh, to Naples. To Naples, and he. I guess you're, you're one of your offices. I, one there. of my offices has and there, a. And there's a garage next a door. Huge garage, covered garage, because it's next to a mall. So we so stopped. We stopped and got breakfast. You was, beat the rain. We, we beat, beat the rain. rain. We got there. We had breakfast. Yeah. Right as we we're leaving breakfast, it starts to sprinkle a little yeah. bit. We pulled across the street into the garage. Mm -hmm. Now here's the bad thing about <laughs> this because the breakfast was great. Had. Yeah four or five cups of coffee yeah and then we go across there and it's it's a garage from a mall yeah which is not open yet because yeah. it opens so at the like bathroom 11 was closed so the bathroom's locked it has a gate and it's shut and there's tons of maintenance guys kind of scooting around on their little carts mm -hmm. but i could not get their attention and no big deal you could kind of walk around the corner mm -hmm. pee behind a bush but at a certain mm -hmm. point that coffee kicked in and i'm yeah. like i 
I need a bathroom. I yeah. really need a bathroom. And it's raining. Yeah, it's pouring. Oh, and it's I'm like, pouring. and I was like, all right, well, there is a, uh, there's a CVS. Like, yeah, it's less than a mile from here. Yeah. I'm going for it. You know? Yeah. So he took off on the bike in the rain. Yeah. And, and went then to I CVS. get back and he's like, oh, I found the maintenance guy. He opened the door for me. He speaks Spanish. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> like you couldn't have done that an hour ago when I was begging, you know, tricks of the trade. I love it. Yeah. And, and that, that was our last trip. Um, we have plans of trips of, uh, um, you know, we want to do the West Coast part of it or, or Colorado yeah. um, out there. I was just talking to uh, the president of the Ducati at Tampa Bay Club the other yesterday, actually, which we'll get to that on the next podcast. But um, they are going to Colorado, um, I think, this summer. And I think there's 10 of them and they're shipping their bikes out to get because that's what I'm always interested in, how they get the bikes out there. Because mm -hmm. I'm looking at shipping my bike out and it's really expensive. Mm -hmm. But since they're going in a bigger group, they're hiring one guy to take all 10 or 11 bikes. And they're and, and he's trekking them out to Chicago. I'm sorry, uh, Denver. And then they're going to fly out there, get their bikes, ride for four or five mm -hmm. days. And then he's going to he's going to wait and then he's going to drive the bikes back. Okay. So they don't have to. They don't have to do the trip. And, in their, in yes. yeah. and another trip we have planned is Dominican Republic. Yeah, uh, we're looking we, into that. We already have uh, a couple of. Um, I know one group that goes ahead. They rent you the bike, the gear, everything. You just have to show up, and you could do in, in um, levels from uh, easy to intermediate to. Yeah, because those are more expert, like dual sport. Dual sport bikes and go yeah. into the mountains and the jungle, mm. and go to waterfalls and all these places. And and we could do that. They do one, two, three. Four days. Yeah. And that's the and, trip we have. And you've got some I have, accommodations I have, down there. We have good accommodations, very good accommodations. Yeah, 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 right on right on the beach. Nice. Yeah. Well, let me ask a question from you guys. Um, the one reason earlier I mentioned, you know, I was asking about the group, right? How large the group was. Would you prefer like what's your preferred number to ride long distance traveling with? Two, three, eight. I, I mean, does it matter? So it, it has to do more with personalities and sleep schedules and how much they want to ride. Yeah, that's been than the than the amount of people because you know if you just want to ride two hours and take a break and then one hour and then I'm you know I'm, I don't want to ride anymore. Yeah, thing I hear for the day. We 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 ride. Yeah, when we six do, hours. Well, yeah, okay. when we do those those trips up to the mountains, like we yeah. we will literally start in Atlanta and end up in Gatlinburg but yep. meanwhile I've caught like all the best roads it wasn't like yep. we went on the highway there we yep. we rode every every back road every that, highly that, rated road on river yeah. we've taken it to get there and then the next mm -hmm. day back you know and yeah. so we'll we'll ride and you guys have learned your style of riding too so that, yeah. you, you know that also helps when somebody is mm -hmm. when you're just a little out of sync i've ridden with people where just you just couldn't get comfortable riding yeah. with them right if you know yeah, what now, i mean it's now, hard to put like, in words if, if, but if you're at the stop with jose and he says look i just want to take it easy from here <laughs> Know that when you get back in the bike, for some reason, he's going to peg it at 100 and something miles an hour. I'm like, what? I thought we were taking it easy. It was supposed to be an easy ride. No, I don't like speed. I do. I what, what bothers me is, you know, people on their phones, they're not looking and they swerve into you. And, and you so yeah, you, you, like, you want to get like, away from you, issues. You have to weave in and out of traffic to get away from cars. Get away from the issues. That's, that's what I do. Yeah, that's, that, that's how I ride. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the motocross days. You know, in between, get away, get away from people. Get away from it, yeah. And, and you know, one day I'll get stopped and I'm going to tell them, listen, I'm not going to be killed by somebody on the phone. You should stop that person. Exactly, yeah. I'm getting a away from these cars so I can ride safe. Yeah. But, you know, these 110, 20, 30, 40, 140 miles an hour that people do sometimes. So my son works in, 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 a, in a hospital. Mm. He's an emergency room physician. Okay. And I tell him, do you, do you see motorcycle accidents? He says, we see them all the time, but... It's usually a 19-year-old, 20-year-old, new bike. Yeah. And yeah, if you can live through do, those first few years, you're going to be yeah. okay. <laughs> you you know, they do toxicology reports on them. Hmm. Yeah, most I think the most recent and, uh, stats yeah. that came out from the DOT said that like 80% of the crashes or something like that were this is one of those things we're going to have to do a correction on next week. Right. <laughs> Fact check. Yeah, but like a, a vast majority of the crashes are alcohol or yeah. or just distracted driving like they were looking at their phone or yep. or drugs and uh, or lack of safety gear i read yeah. a lot of like depending on the demographic I mean, but like, like the actual cause of the wreck like the cause of the cause of the wreck is usually alcohol related yeah yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's it is sometimes other driver error but i think that's a very small person usually it's a mistake you've made mm -hmm. on your own mm -hmm. which is kind of why like now especially as an older rider 
um, I have more confidence that I'm not going to be in an accident because I'm, I'm in control of my own destiny for the most mm -hmm. part, you know? So just to summarize that mm -hmm. thought real quick, um, the, the group riding, mm -hmm. you're fine with a larger group as long as everybody's kind of on the same page, right? Uh, it's like, okay, everybody, we're, well, we're going to do a four hour stand. I, yeah. yeah, I don't, okay. I don't mind like the, the ride we did to Cedar Key was fine. Cause it was just like a one long day up. And then on the way back, we kind of split off and did our own thing. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know if I'd want to be in a big group that large to do, like the like when I was on the train um, a few months ago, and there was a group of guys on there, like five of them together, and we all rode we rode together back to the start of the trail. But the next day they rode together, and I got way farther than they did because when you have that many people, it's like you mm -hmm. got more bathroom stops, more food stops, mm -hmm. and you tend to ride slower. You too. have to ride. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. You have to because especially on stay in a group on mm -hmm. that yeah on that road where there's really no passing. Like, you know, if you're by yourself, you can kind of sneak around a car every once in a while. And most mm -hmm. of the cars will kind of pull off and let you go by. But when there's five of you or six of you together, you can't do that. I mean, yeah. you, you yeah. can, but then it's incredibly dangerous because it takes yeah. a lot longer for six people to get around. Yeah. Because okay. I know when you and I ride together, we we sneak through. We're very much in tune, right? Yeah. yeah. You get a group together. Then then you're obligated to, okay, now everybody well, stay you start staggered. At, you start looking at the person that's way in the back. And yeah. sometimes they just, they just start falling farther and farther the behind. The group ride that we did to Ace Cafe in Orlando yeah. from Tampa um, that we did all back roads, it was a huge group. Yeah. Disaster. Yeah, because that's it, true. Because it, we we couldn't get, and some people didn't want to get on the turnpike. Yeah, some people which were, gets you there fast. But the turnpike, everybody's going ninety, and they, some people didn't want to get on. So we we split it up and took fifty. But fifty has ten miles stuff, just traffic lights. of just traffic lights. Mm. Yeah, and it was like so hot it, and slow. And then yeah, and, and then was, if somebody doesn't make the light, then you have to pull yeah, over. Everybody and wait. has to stop. Yeah, I don't. I don't really like yeah, smaller groups. Smaller groups are better. Yeah. I, I think if you're gonna do a fun ride like up in the mountains. Maybe four at the most, you know. Four sounds like four, a good four number. Four is a good number. At the most, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, it's it's just, like you said, the whole working out, like, who's mm -hmm. hungry, who's not hungry, who's got to pee or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like, right. all that stuff works into it. And when there's, the lot, like, just traveling with two people is fun. And I, I don't mind traveling myself. I, I like that, too. Yeah. I mean, it, there's there's, you know pros and cons of each mm -hmm. when you're by yourself then at the end of the day when you want to have a beer and chat or whatever you're mm -hmm. you're just talking to the bartender you know? yeah <laughs> which is also not bad yeah. um but when you're with somebody else and you're like oh i'm gonna stop and take a picture there and then you, t you stop yeah. and then and then you go like a mile and you're like oh i want to stop and take a picture there too and then you can tell the person's like Fuck, why'd you stop again right like, we just stopped like back there like yeah but this has got a better view you know yeah so then that can get and, and when you're doing those rides that are very scenic there's going to be multiple stops and one might be better than the other yeah and 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 it's you know, tough because you're you... there to see the scenery and enjoy the exactly. ride exactly yeah so you know you take the pictures because that's what's going to build a memory and and the instagram page you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what are you hoping to do with the mto9 um jose Is squid that... pure squid he's gonna become a squid <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's your local Tampa run around bike. Yeah, I'm, I'll take the the Bonneville and use it more for long distance because I have the Corbin seat on it, which is a little more comfortable. And then I'll go ahead and um, um, use the MTO nine as a daily, and I'm gonna give it to my son. So oh. my, my son will be yeah, it'll the it'll end up being. One of the two, I don't know. Huh. I promised him the Yamaha, and then I'm thinking, I'm telling what you, if right. I love it? I'm gonna. He might get the Bonneville. Uh, I, he so might not get. So, the, so this is my story too, because like I maybe I, he wants the Porsche. I'm yeah, sorry, well, Rob. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I bought. When I, I die, he can have the Porsche. Yeah, <laughs> I bought. I bought the Tracer with the same expectation that I was gonna keep it for trips, and I'm gonna ride around the Bonneville. Yeah, and then because the Tracer, so the Tracer started out as an MTO9 Tracer. That's that yeah. was his designation when they first built it. Because basically, it's it is the exact same bike, just a little taller and mm -hmm. you know with more bags or whatever. But um, yeah, I got that bike, and then after riding around for two weeks, I was like, oh, I'm never riding a Bonneville again. Like, <laughs> it's just gonna sit in my garage. Like, I I was forcing myself to get on it to go. And it's a beautiful bike, but it's just once you ride the other bike for a while, you're gonna be like, it's just so much more fun. It's so mm -hmm. much more nimble and fast, and you know, yeah, you're. You're going to be going here, here, Robbie. Here, Robbie, Robbie. Here's, yeah, here's your, here's your Bonneville. Here's the Bonneville. Yeah. <laughs> it's a limited edition. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> now, I mean, I, I still, part of me still wishes I had kept it, except for mm -hmm. the part of me that got to pay off the tracer. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Because, because 
we're very much still involved in the Triumph community yeah, here, right? right? We, you're, we you'll check. always be a little bit of a Triumph guy. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it'll always be in your DNA, well, I, your I, motorcycle I, I DNA. Triumph today. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, if I had unlimited budget, you know, then I would definitely, I would hope, I, I would have a garage full of motorcycles. Sure. We, mm-hmm. we, when we were at this event, which we'll talk about on the next podcast, mm-hmm. the MV Augusta event yesterday. Um, the lightning goalie, um, Andre Vasilevsky. Our, our good friend. Our good friend, yeah. our <laughs> good good friend Andre was there. <laughs> and uh, he must have incredible self-control because, like, there's all these beautiful bikes in there. And I was joking with Sean. I go, you realize he could buy every bike in the store and yeah. it, would, it wouldn't even be one of his paychecks. You know, like, yeah. these are super expensive bikes, like 50, 50 grand for the new... But for the new like, Rush. That was, the a, Rush that was a beautiful yeah. bike. It, it was yeah, unbelievable. It was a super Veloce's. I mean, I'm like... If if it was if I had his money, which was you know his new contract t- t- together, his contracts are like a hundred million bucks. Yeah, I, I would be like every motorcycle store I went in, I'd be like I want that one and that one and that. <laughs> yeah, and, and then I'm just gonna buy a massive trailing. garage and we're yeah. just gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna hire I'm gonna be Jay Leno. So it's gonna happen. Yeah, that's what happened to Jay Leno. He has hundreds of millions of dollars and he loves cars so and motorcycles. He buys, yeah, and he just buys every one that he likes and. He has so, to hire a staff to turn them on and. He does though. He has a staff. Yeah. Of course, yeah. he loves it too. He's out there tinkering, but. Andre was nice enough to uh, let us do a selfie with him. Yeah. And I, I sent that to my sister, and she says, ask him for a motorcycle. <laughs> I said, I don't think I'm his type. Yeah. <laughs> he was a very, very quiet and shy yeah. guy. He stayed the whole night, hung out back there in the back, and just, you know, he took a couple of pictures, but most people left. I wanted to leave him alone. I wanted the picture with him, but I also I wanted forced to leave him alone. Brian to... And Sean was just like, Sean went over and asked them, and at that point, it got awkward. I was like, all right, fine, let's take the picture. Fine. Because he's waiting for us to take the picture now. <laughs> I could tell from his face he didn't want to do it. But oh, he wanted to. He yeah, wanted to. yeah, no, he didn't. he didn't. He really didn't want to take it, but he did. He was nice. And he actually looked at it and he goes, oh, the light's not good. Do you want to take it again? Which is very nice. And I wish I had taken that advice because uh, years ago I met uh, Lynn manuel Miranda at my wife's family mm-hmm. reunion. And we went to take a photo with him. And he goes, there's a lot of backlight here. Are you sure? And I go, oh, no, no, it's fine. And then I got the photo, and then I didn't want to ask him for another one. And then now, for years, every time I show the photo to somebody, I'm like, well, the, the light's a little bad in the back. But <laughs> For those who don't know, that's the gentleman that wrote uh, Hamilton. Hamilton and acted in the original. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. the original, and he's done all these Disney projects and stuff. So. Mm-hmm. And he is a cousin of your wife. Exactly. Her, uh, her <clears throat> great-grandfather is uh, Luis Miranda, and his great-great-grandfather is the same man, basically. So their cousin's, you know, 20 times apart now <laughs> but their dad my wife's dad and his dad have the exact same name they're both Luis s miranda hmm. so which is kind of interesting my name is Luis s miranda yeah. you kill my father prepare to die <laughs> so speaking of uh entertainment movies you have a story for us about um how you got back to the dr and something yeah. something involving a movie you've been teasing it <laughs> so, so well i'll, I'll I'll, the reason why, you know, I, I was born in the U.S. and raised most of my life here, but I, I did live in, in, in DR, you know, for a while. Mm. And and the reason mostly was because my dad was a lawyer and he was a lawyer mm. for the police, oh. uh, the police department. And he was picked up by the FBI to, to go to the FBI Academy. Oh, nice. I thought I was like, because he's corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> picked up, you know. That's, no. That's a good story uh, here. And he, so he joined the FBI and he went to the FBI Academy and graduated. one of the first 10 Latin American males to graduate with honors from the FBI. So he goes, he was here as an agent and then he goes back to Dominican Republic. Hmm. So at that time, there was no FBI. So he wrote the bylaws and created, you know, what's called the DNI. Okay. Oh, very in, cool. In DR. So in the 70s, when I was there, um, you know, the, 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 the Godfather, 1970s. the 1970s, uh, the Godfather <laughs> part two yeah. was filmed in Santo Domingo. It was supposed to be Cuba that uh-huh. they're there, but it was all in Santo Domingo. And uh, they were they were staying at the uh, the ambassador hotel. And my dad was in charge of making sure security of everything, you know, for the for the cast and all. So I had lunch with uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Wow. So and my dad had a 62 Mercedes Benz, old Mercedes. Um, and they were going to use it in, in the movie, but the movie's supposed to be 59. I think yeah. it's 1959. So it was it was two, three years too new, yeah. too new for the for the movie. So they didn't use it. Um, but he was in making sure security of, of the, uh, mm. of the cast. And so he had lunch and he said, Hey, you want to go to lunch with Francis Ford Coppola? I'm 10 years old. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, sure. Mm. So I, I, I saw not when they were filming, but you know, the cast that was there and, and where they, where they were filming at the hotel and all that. That's cool. So, Neat memory. You know, 
Yeah. yeah. Very cool memory we, this, of movies. This is like two podcasts in a row we've talked about Godfather. <laughs> I, I brought the Apollonia. That's last, right. You did. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. So um, this is the end of the show. We usually talk about what we've been uh, um, watching or listening or reading in the last uh, week. Yeah. Have you seen or heard anything interesting this last week? What have I been watching? Um Started the Outer Range second yeah. season. Yeah, so we both watched Outer Range season one, and Sean messaged me the other day. He said, "Hey, Outer Range season two, is you gonna watch it?" And so I went, "Yeah," and I went immediately and watched all seven episodes. Mm. And then I go, "What'd you think of it?" And he goes, "Oh, I've only seen half of the first one." Yeah, I was just <laughs> like, I, "That is, it's kind of a slow burn." Well, it's also uh, the first season was very complicated. There was a lot that happened in it. And I found a good video on YouTube of a guy doing a recap because the recap they showed you at the beginning of season two on Amazon was, it was terrible. It was like, here's three scenes you might remember. And I'm like, but so much happened. So mm. there's a good recap on, uh, on YouTube. And I watched that, which reminded me of all these things. Cause it's got a lot to do with uh, time trial. It was basically Yellowstone. If they had a, uh, a time portal in the middle of the, the valley. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those sci-fi shows where it's, it's only kind of sci-fi yeah you yeah. know there's just a little element it's, of science it's josh, fiction it's in josh it. brolin and With um, fantastic acting yeah all the cast is is, is great and um uh, i'll spoil a little bit of it so basically he when he's a little kid he falls through this hole and he he comes out in like the 1960s i'm guessing mm. but he but he started from the 1860s so so he's like a kid from you know lincoln's time that ends up in the uh, Right. ends up in the modern modern America and and stays there and um and the whole kind of comes and goes I don't know they don't explain what it is some kind of portal some yeah. kind of portal that's on the land that his wife's family owns and um it's got, probably tie back to the Native American aspect yeah yeah I there's think. yeah there's a there's a whole Native American storyline and and there's like a rival family that wants the land and they because they kind of know about the portal and I don't know what their plan is with it but but it's good. I would. It's, good, I would it's, definitely, a, really, it's a really good show. Yeah, yeah. and it, it helps if you, you know, if you watch season one. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't start with season two. Yeah. So what else is that? It. Um. Yeah, that's about it from my side this week. Yeah. Outer range. Yeah. You what were about saying, you? You were saying you. Uh, you're reading a book? I, I'm, I'm, I'm reading a field hospital manual on how the Army runs field hospitals. Is that available on Audible? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's, 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 uh, it's not boring. It's interesting. It's how um, field hospitals work and how they function, how it, uh, you, know, you set it up, tear it down, make it work. I, I have 400 and something soldiers, and everyone has a job to do, and we have to manage a field hospital are there so chapters to, about setting the tents up um there well insert rod into post b it's actually not that simple but, <laughs> but um it, it's, it's it's like an i IKEA. haven't gotten to the to the to that to the, to the <laughs> setup. It, it, it's like ikea there's no there's no words it's just pictures <laughs> little, little letters next to everything a yeah. little a little uh, nail, arrow yeah nail 78 yeah. put here well, I did love the show MASH when I was a kid. So I, so, you know, I'm pretty much an expert on field hospitals. So that that's what I that's what I command right now. So um, it used to be MASH, then it changed to cash, and now it's field hospital. Hmm. It's, but yeah, it, it's a MASH. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. Is that what it is? Is that what it um, used to stand for? I just I didn't, I don't know. I, I remember so. the I, cash. I think you're right. What's it, what's the C for? Uh, a combat support hospital. Okay. Hmm. That's what they call cash. Now it's just field hospital. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. My both my mother and my father were army. You know. So I cool. I have a, a do not recommend show for you. Um, I also other than Outer Range, I watched the uh, movie that just came to Netflix, Madam Web, which is uh, in the Sony Spider Man universe. Like, it's the one with uh, Dakota Johnson, uh, the daughter of Melanie Griffith and. Don Johnson. Oh, the one that they give her a lot of grief because she's kind of dry. Her acting's kind of flat. I mean, that's pretty much every role she's ever had. Yeah. Yeah, they put her in the what was that that sexy drama Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, I didn't didn't watch those, but I heard. Well, I've seen. Please, Caltech, you read the books. Come on. No, I read. I read the book. That's why I didn't watch them. I read. I didn't want to spoil it because I read the books. No, 
so they they in the trailer they they show you like you see like a spider-man type figure and he's the bad guy and he's jumping around and then they also show you like uh the three like sydney sweeney's one of them there's like three younger i guess teenage girls that have spider powers but in the movie they don't really have spider powers yet the the bad guys had a vision of his future and he sees them as the spider girls kill him and so he's out to get them before they get their powers and that's what the movie's about and her power is sort of seeing the future hmm. i don't know it's terrible it, it is like like if you've seen any of the it's other terrible people, that's it it's, it's terrible <laughs> it is so bad yeah they they did they totally like you, you see the trailer and you're like oh there's gonna be all this action and spider people and stuff and it's literally like a three the scene that you see in the trailer is what is the entire part of it and they also do a thing where um her she's an ambulance driver or whatever and her partner is uncle ben so he's he's spider-man's uncle but okay but his sister is getting ready to have give birth she's pregnant with spider-man basically um and it's, she's played by julia roberts niece uh emma i guess yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so like they're they're in it and they're kind of like wink wink see this is spider-man's in the movie he's right there in her belly you know and they they're even going like what are we gonna name him i don't know you know like so they, they, they make that part of the plot. Um, mm. But yeah, no, it's... Uh, it's, it's well, I have been... You know, my wife is uh, from India. So we do watch a lot of Indian cinema. Did you get... Bollywood. You watching, Bollywood. Did you, have you watched... Bollywood. Did you watch uh, Monkey Man yet? No, I haven't seen Monkey Man. I, yeah, thanks for like, reminding like me. five bucks. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I got to do Monkey Man. I, I, Support I, I, Dev. The, the one thing I wanted to ask you guys are, because you guys have smaller dogs. I have a huge dog. Um, I was wondering, you guys have smaller. I was like, come on, man. Let's not put that on the podcast. Uh, Where is this conversation going? Where is it going? Do you guys think of riding with your with, with the dog? Like, uh, I've seen guys. There's this one guy in BMW um, that comes to some of these things, and he's got his dog in a little, a little basket with the goggles on. It's super cute, but no, I would never do it. Nah, I, 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 yeah. think, I, I think I might get a cat just to go ahead and put a helmet on oh uh, yeah because my dog is 70 pounds and you know he you'd he, have to get a full, full side yeah for full that. side helmet for for him i'm thinking that you know get a cat and and put one on there is this one cat i see on instagram a lot yeah he's got like yeah he's like he's got, gray. Like, yeah, he's got the guy he's, and he apparently loves it because he just hops up there and he's ready to go <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah I, um, that's awesome I, I don't think i i don't think i want my dog well my one dog is 14 and he's no he's not ready for <laughs> that kind of adventure and the other one is you, just you, now you can't put him here and, 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 and the other and one is just a pain in the ass I, <laughs> the yeah. producer the producer no that's one of his dogs <laughs> yeah yeah he, he's got a couple dogs she has my wife has a couple of dogs. <laughs> they're, they're, I, can't, they're, I can't claim those. Yeah, their dogs are actually good friends of mine. I, I like their dogs. Although I actually got bit this week by a dog on a job. I was on a job site, and the lady's like, "I gotta let my dog out to go to the bathroom." I'm like, "Oh, I'll go shut the gate." And I walk out there, and I'm I'm closing the gate, and all of a sudden I'm like, "Ow!" And I look down at my foot, and this little freaking it had six pound dog. Yeah, it was it was a. Uh, um, What's the Mexican dog? The uh, Chihuahua. Chihuahua. It was a Chihuahua mix, and it had one eye. The other eye, I guess, it, from birth, <laughs> they had to stay sewed it shut. So it was like this little gangster one eye. Oh my gosh! And I guess he saw me closing the gate and decided that I was going to do something to his mom. And he just literally, I was wearing like, you know, cloth sneakers, and he bit, mm -hmm. and it broke the skin. Like he went through my shoe and my sock, and wow. And I, I was nice, and I didn't kick him. You know, <laughs> like I was doing that 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 dance when they you know like when they fire the gun at your feet and they're like dance sucker. Yeah. I, I was doing that because he was trying to get my other foot and i was like no 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 and I'm you think i'm funny yeah, yeah funny how like i'm here to amuse you yeah like i'm a clown so yeah that was uh well good good yeah but this is a it's been a fun episode this has been great our first great to guest our first on guest. moto bs and we're definitely gonna have jose back we got we got more stories to get we didn't even get to all the rides it's been an honor back. jose anytime you want to come thank and join you. us thank you more than happy to have you here. And yeah, you've you've got our Venmo, so <laughs> I direct I'll, I'll send you money for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool deal. Well, right. I hope you guys uh